What is up guys? Thank you so much for being here. So today I just wanted to make a quick video kind of just showing off how I set up my rifle. Um, I know that I really enjoy seeing other people's videos about how they set up theirs because it kind of like inspires me or at least gives me like ideas as to how I can set mine up like different options and that kind of thing. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. All right, so I'm not gonna do like a really in-depth description of each item because I've already done reviews on some of the accessories. And so I'm just gonna kinda mention what it is and why I chose it for this setup. Right here, I've got a little vertical grip. It's a BCM, like short angled vertical grip. And it's kinda nice because it even has a little O-ring sealed cap down here that you can pop open. That way if you wanna like stick a little extra fire starting kit if this is like your survival gun or just extra batteries for your scope or whatever. And speaking of batteries, I actually have two extra batteries for my scope because it does have an illuminated reticle. And even though the battery lasts like a ridiculously long time on this thing, um, I still like having a couple extras just because you never know. Batteries do fail and it's nice to have an extra. And just in case that one isn't working, I put two in here because they're just so little and lightweight. So I put two extra batteries and they're wrapped in a Ziploc that way just in case somehow water did get in here, uh, the batteries will be okay. By the way, I set up my vertical grip because it's got a slight angle to it. And I made it so that the angle faces forward instead of backwards. Because for me, it's a little bit more comfortable if it creates a small pocket and it creates more of that pocket when it's facing forward than when it's angled back and then it just kind of leans more like an angled grip. And so it's just a slight curve, but I like having that little pocket to be able to like really pull it into my shoulder. Normally I pull this out a little bit more, but I'm also rocking a little Magpul sling on here with the QD attachment points. So quick detach, makes it super nice. You just have a little button in the center that you just push and that's what unlocks it and super easy. Luckily this rifle comes with the QD attachment points like already in there so I didn't have to put a little piece of rail on there or attach like a QD mount for it like you do on a lot of rifles. This has the attachment points on both sides right here as well as both sides of the stock so that way if you're a lefty and you have it set up the opposite, you can set it up on the other side or however you wanna do it. And one thing I wanted to mention about this sling is it is a two point sling obviously, but it also has this cool like QD spot. That way you can attach it to itself and then have a one point sling. And so that just makes it really versatile. Basically you don't need to buy two separate slings and try them both or whatever. You just can get this one and try out both different ways and see which one you like more. And if you did like the single point sling more, you would attach it right back here. It's got another QD point, and so now it's attached there, and then the sling attaches to itself. Versatility is kind of something that I appreciate, and it's kind of how I try to set this rifle up. And in addition to that versatility, the sling also has this part, it's like a really hard polymer that you can grab and pull and that tightens up the sling, which does a couple of different things. You can use that for tension. As you can see, I've created some tension here, and that will help you get some stability when you're trying to take a long shot or something like that. But also, you would tighten it up like this if you're gonna just like let the rifle hang down. Say you're just walking with it, and you're just gonna let the sling hold it for you, and you're not gonna hold it with your hands then you would tighten it up so it's not dragging down by your knees and smacking you or something like that. But then if you wanted to loosen it up, all you do is that and now you've got all this extra slack. Now I don't have a custom trigger in here yet, but hopefully in the future I'll put a nice Geisley or something. But for now I'm just using the mil spec trigger and it works just fine. Obviously it's not quite as crisp and quite as lightweight and precise if you want to say as like an aftermarket trigger but it gets the job done and it's reliable, so it's working for now. Now before I get to the scope and my backup iron sights, because those are the nicest part of this gun, I want to grab one thing that I don't have mounted yet because I'm waiting on the little piece of rail to attach it. So what I've got is this weapon light, and it's a Haley Strategic Enforce um, XL or WM XL, something like that. Um, I'll try and put a link in the description if I can. 
And I'll do that for as many of the items as I can. That way, if you're interested, all you gotta do is click on that link and you can check it out. And a couple of things that make this light so cool is that it's got this switch, so you can easily switch between 400 or 800 lumens. Um, that way, if you're inside, you could use it at 400. Say you have this set up by your bed for like your home defense weapon or whatever. You could put it at 400. That way, it's still plenty bright to see down the hall or anything like that but you're not gonna blind yourself when you go into like a white room or you just shine it off a white wall of some sort. It's not gonna blind you. So I like that, but then also the fact that it's momentary on only. It's just got this nice, it's nice and big, soft little pressure switch. And so when you push that, it turns it on. Now, if you had this mounted on and you're holding the gun, you know, however you want, I can't really, it's kind of hard to do when it's not actually mounted, but See how easily my thumb just rests on there? And if I'm not using it, then I would just put my thumb up here. And then when I'm using it, I just hit the switch. It's still gonna be plenty bright even from back here. And maybe I'll move my grip up and have this a little bit closer to the end. And the reason he designed this flashlight to not have like a permanent on is because it's not really necessary. I mean, if you're gonna scan a room like in your house because you think there's an intruder or whatever, you don't really need to just leave your light on and be walking through the house or the building or the forest or whatever the situation is because you're just letting everybody know where you are. And so with a flashlight like that, you should just be using it like very momentary as quickly as you can just to spot the target. And then that way, not everybody can see where you are. Because what if there's two criminals in your house and one sees it and the other doesn't. Well, you got the one guy, but then the other dude saw where you are. So obviously just using the light very momentary and not walking around with it on, it kind of gives you a slight advantage. And I can't wait to put that flashlight on here because for the most part, pretty much every rifle setup should have some kind of light because if you can't see in the dark, then you can't really defend yourself. So you're probably wondering what kind of scope I've got on here. Um, I saved it for one of the last things because it's, in my opinion, like one of the best parts about this setup. But this is a Trigicon AccuPower and it's a one to four power scope. And the reason I like that so much is because at one power, you can still use it like up close for self-defense if you needed to. But at four power, it gives you enough magnification to reach out and really shoot like to a few hundred yards. Now for me, the furthest I've shot this is around 150 yards but it was just a breeze. It was so easy. I was literally hitting every single shot. And that's not like to say that I'm a super great shooter or anything like that, because I just consider myself an average shooter. But this scope with this rifle is just very, very accurate. And a couple of things that I really like about this scope is you've got the dial here, which changes the illumination power because the reticle is illuminated. It doesn't have to be. Like in the daytime, I won't use the illumination because for one, I mean, it's daytime, so you don't need it. It kind of actually looks better when you just have black reticle against the bright backdrop or whatever. But in low light, if you're hunting early in the morning, something like that, you would want to have that illumination because it really helps make the reticle pop. For me, one of the things I really like about it is say I'm using this as my home defense gun and hopefully this never happens, but somebody did break in and I needed to use this. The cool thing about the illuminated reticle is it doesn't matter what the scope is set at, you can have it set at one power or four power, but it doesn't really make a difference because you can just, you know, you're in your, you're in your house, so you're not really gonna need to see super far away. Everything's gonna be like pretty close to you. So you don't have to look down the scope actually, you just use the illumination of the reticle and you shoot with two eyes, with both eyes open. So you're just kind of there with both eyes open and you just point and shoot basically. You just put the dot on the person, kind of how you would put like a red dot. If you just had a little red dot on here, because obviously even though this has a one power option, it's not the same as having just an actual red dot on here because you still have that eye relief to deal with. And if you're just in a quick up close like defense situation, you got the illuminated reticle, that's all you really need. Like I said, just put it on there and shoot with both eyes open and put the red dot on there and you're good. So this thing is really versatile like that. And that's kind of how I try to build this gun is for overall versatility. And speaking of versatility, I put this on an American Defense quick detach mount, 
which this thing is super nice. A little pricey, but this rifle overall was a little pricey, the whole setup. But I kind of wanted to have that one rifle that I just said, oh well, you know, it's going to be expensive. And I kind of bought the parts little by little. Like I didn't buy the scope right away when I bought the rifle. I bought the rifle on a Black Friday, so it was like three or four hundred bucks off. And I got some free Oakley sunglasses. But since I don't really wear sunglasses, I sold those for like a hundred bucks. And so basically I saved like four or five hundred bucks off the rifle. And I kind of did that with everything. I waited until it was on a deal. Even if it was just like a slight deal, I still rather save some money. So like I was saying, this is on a quick detach mount. And this American Defense mount is known for being one of the most reliable quick detach mounts out there. It's hard to keep zero on a quick detach mount because there's more moving parts to it. Sometimes you take it off and you put it back on and it, it's just not as precise or so it won't be in that exact same spot where you had the rifle zeroed in. But they make the claim that it always keeps a zero and so far for me I haven't had any issues with it because I always take this thing off to clean it. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why I got the quick detach mount. Part of it was so I could like quickly go to my iron sights if this were to break. Um, not that I'm you know gonna be in a situation where I'm like in battle or anything and need to take this thing off and use my iron sights but it's just nice to be able to take off when you are at the range and be able to just practice with your iron sights and put that back on and have your scope still be sighted in not have to go through that whole ordeal again. And in addition, like I said, being able to take it off while you clean the gun, because lots of times when I clean the gun, I'm putting it upside down, I'm putting cleaning solution in here or uh, like some gun oil once it's all clean. And sometimes it comes out of the ejection port and it'll drip down and get on the scope and it's not a big deal but then you kind of have to wipe it off and you have more to clean versus just taking it off while you clean the gun and if some stuff gets on the outside it's not a big deal you just wipe it off and you're good so it just makes the cleaning process a little bit less messy plus i wanted to be able to take off that scope in case i ever get a red dot in the future which i plan on doing because that way i can have a more lightweight setup sometimes Maybe for home defense, I'll keep the red dot on there, and then when I go to the range um, or go practice shooting out in the mountains, I can put the scope on there. Once again, that just gives me a little bit more versatility, being able to go back and forth between the two without having to like re-zero every time. I think that'll be pretty fun. Plus, this guy weighs a lot because the mount itself, I believe, is like 10 or 11 ounces, and then the scope, I believe, is right around a pound. So you're looking at almost two pounds just with this. In the future, when I do get a red dot, it'll be nice to not always have a heavier setup because I'm a pretty small guy. And so for me, like if I am out practicing and I'm doing like shooting between multiple targets and all that, like my arm gets pretty tired. And so having a little red dot on here or just using iron sights makes it ridiculously lighter. Like it doesn't seem like that big of a difference to have, you know, a little under two pounds on here, but that makes a big difference when you're, you know, using your arm to hold it up. You know, you start to get tired, and when you start to get tired, you start to get less accurate. So anyways, last but not least, I'm going to try and wrap it up here. I've got these Troy Battle Sights. That's just what they're called. Um, but they're just little flip-up sights, and I got these because, once again, I wanted this to be like my bomb-proof, cool setup. And these are just really, really tough, heavy-duty. And of course, in the back, you can change this to use the smaller hole so it's a little bit more accurate if you're going to shoot further away but if you're shooting closer you can use the larger hole and these are both adjustable for like wind and elevation so it's just one more thing that makes this gun a lot of fun all right guys well i rambled a little bit much but sometimes i just can't help it because i love talking about this setup and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below um like if you would do something different or how you set up your rifle because i love hearing about other people's rifle setups as well also if you like these kinds of videos um, I also do like backpack reviews and like everyday carry, that kind of stuff. So any of that gear review type stuff, if you're interested in that, definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. It's like a really small thing that you could do that really helps out my channel. So I would really appreciate that. But with that being said, just thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.